Hello, I'm Dr. Ralph DeFranco, and I'm Professor of Medicine and Chief of the Diabetes Division at the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio, Texas. This is part two of a series on shifting the clinical inertia paradigm, a proactive and individualized approach sponsored by AstraZeneca. In this chapter, we will be discussing current challenges in diabetes management. As we discussed in detail in the previous chapter, type 2 diabetes is a complex and progressive disease with multiple dysfunctions contributing to its pathophysiology. Furthermore, we've also seen data that show prolonged hyperglycemic exposure results in an increased risk of long-term complications. Type 2 diabetes has reached epidemic proportions in the U.S. This map shows the prevalence of diagnosed diabetes amongst U.S. adults aged 18 years or older. Note that the prevalence is adjusted for age based on the 2000 U.S. Census Standard Population Age Groups. In 2012, about 1 in 11 people had diabetes based on the CDC statistics report, and type 2 diabetes accounted for 90% to 95% of diagnosed cases of diabetes. Despite the wide array of available medications, achieving diabetes treatment goals remains a challenge for many patients, as evidenced by recent National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey or NHANES data. These data collected from 1999 to 2010 included 2,403 adults aged 18 years or older with type 2 diabetes. The proportion of patients with type 2 diabetes achieving an A1C goal of less than 7% within one year of diagnosis is shown in the graph on the right. From the most recent data in 2009 to 2010, it was 55%, meaning that 45% of patients were still not reaching treatment goals. The chronic and progressive nature of type 2 diabetes is evident from the United Kingdom Prospective Diabetes Study, or UKPDS. In this 10-year study, patients were assigned to conventional therapy, diet, or intensive therapy, a sulfonylurea, metformin, or insulin. This graph shows that the median A1C in the first five years of follow-up was 6.7% in the metformin group and 7.5% in the conventional group. In the last five years of follow-up, the A1C in the metformin and conventional groups were 8.3% and 8.8% respectively. The patients receiving sulfonylurea or insulin therapy had an A1C similar to that of the metformin group. Importantly, this graph shows that despite intensive therapy, glycemic control deteriorates over time. Unfortunately, achieving diabetes treatment goals remains a challenge for many patients as evidenced by recent NHANES data. As we saw previously, the proportion of patients with type 2 diabetes achieving an A1C goal of less than 7% was only 55% in 2010. Therefore, 45% of patients were still uncontrolled. Furthermore, only 8% of patients achieved combined treatment goals, which included A1C, blood pressure, lipid, and weight loss. The combined goals were defined as an A1C less than 7%, blood pressure less than 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury, LDL cholesterol less than or equal to 100 milligram per deciliter, and a BMI of less than 30 kilogram per meter squared. The achievement of the recommended goals for glycemic control may remain a challenge, particularly if a conservative stepwise approach to the treatment of type 2 diabetes is employed, as depicted in this graph. Moreover, it has been shown that it may take 1.2 to 3 years for uncontrolled patients to receive additional treatment. While the length of time required to escalate therapy can be due to many factors, these data serve to highlight 
that exposure to uncontrolled glycemia may be unnecessary, underscoring the need for a more proactive management approach. Recommendations to adjust treatment every three months for patients not reaching glycemic targets are not always followed due to various factors that influence treatment decisions. Patient factors that may contribute to clinical inertia include difficulty in understanding and following strict dietary restrictions and exercise regimens, non-adherence to treatment regimens, and lack of motivation to control their disease. Physician factors may in part be caused by the uncertainty regarding an individual patient's outcome. Clinical trials generate knowledge. However, data generated are statistical and clinicians may question the applicability of the data to actual clinical practice. The perceived risk of unknown outcomes may drive clinicians to prefer the status quo and a poor outcome due to lack of treatment may be viewed as less of a risk than an adverse result due to added treatment. Physicians also may feel that the higher the A1C upon initial consultation, the more difficult the goal to attain will be. With the increased volume of patients in limited number of physicians, time is often a constraint and may hinder communication between patients and physicians. In addition, specialist support may be utilized too late in the disease management and complications already may have arisen before preventative strategies could be employed. In a res retrospective study from the General Electric Centricity Medical Records database from January 2004 to December 2009, 5,870 new onset patients with type 2 diabetes who failed to achieve an A1C of 7.5% on metformin therapy the potential benefit of overcoming treatment inertia was demonstrated. In this study, the odds of reaching glycemic goals were 36% higher with early treatment intensification compared with late intensification. Before we conclude, I want to summarize a few key points. In the previous chapter, we had discussed the complex progressive nature of type 2 diabetes and the complex physiology along with the risk associated with prolonged hyperglycemic exposure. In this chapter, we saw that current clinical practice often delays treatment adjustments, resulting in patient exposure to an undue glycemic burden. In the next chapter, we will discuss new treatment paradigms to address some of these issues. Thank you for joining today, and be sure to listen to Chapter 3, early proactive treatment of type 2 diabetes.